Well, we are all ready and waiting for spring to actually arrive. Yes. But as the flowers and leaves start popping, bugs also come back to Michigan. And one invasive insect that's been giving our trees some major problems, that would be the unsightly spongy moth, formerly called a gypsy moth. We were just talking about this name change, but they've undergone that recent name change. So joining us right now uh, to talk about what we can do to kind of stop the spread of these is Dan Coy. Dan, thank you so much for being here. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure. Yeah. So first, tell us, you know, they're now called spongy moths and it's a little bit better of a way to describe them, right? It, it is. The, the former name gypsy moth like is insensitive um, just of its name, but mm -hmm. it's also not very descriptive. Like, why were they called gypsy moth? Well, some random explanation that rambles <laughs> on about caterpillar behavior. Uh, spongy moth is, in, in my opinion, a much better name because then when people ask me, well, why are they called spongy moth? I'm like, well, their egg masses are spongy looking. It looks like you melted a little sponge on the tree. And they're like, oh, okay. And if you show them a picture of that, then they can instantly identify mm. what this is. You know what you're looking for. Right. right. Mm. And, and speaking of, people should be looking for these at this point. So tell us what people can do to protect their trees and the environment here. Absolutely. So the, these spongy moth, they'll lay their egg masses on primarily oak trees, but really any tree and even cars and other areas when they're real populous mm -hmm. in, in the fall time. So you can look for them in, in the fall. Um, but we want to get people, we want to get the word out this time of year and people aware because it's a great time of year to look for those leaves aren't on the trees. You can see those egg masses, they're, they're fairly large, like a couple inches. Mm -hmm. um, and you can scrape those off into a container of soapy water, just let that set in, in the garage or whatever for, for a day and then flush it. Um, and that'll help really control the population because each one of those egg masses can contain like a thousand plus eggs. So you, like really low cost but high impact control you that also, anybody can do. You were also mentioning a duct tape technique. Tell us about that. <laughs> yeah, so later on in the season after the the oak leaves have come on the trees and the caterpillars have hatched and they crawl around up and down the tree if you just band the tree and we, we recommend a double band of duct tape with the sticky side out you'll catch those caterpillars as they crawl up and then you can just take that duct tape off throw it away um, you might want to do that a couple times throughout the, the summer if you have a lot of caterpillars in your area and that's a great way to catch those caterpillars as they're feeding. Sure. Mm -hmm. and, and explain why this is so important because these don't belong here and, and obviously they spread really quickly mm -hmm. if, if allowed. They, they do. Um, yeah, they are an exotic invasive so they're not from our continent. They don't really have good predators around here. Um, so they can defoliate even large mature oak trees um, multiple times a year and that obviously stresses the trees and we could lose these hundred year old oaks which nobody wants to do. Mm -mm. Um, so from, from an arborist standpoint, from my standpoint, like we, we do this to protect the trees but also you know you think of hundreds of caterpillars in your trees eating a bunch of leaves, uh, they drop a lot of stuff and that <laughs> is also unpleasant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we want, <laughs> we want to keep our Tree City USA status. We do. Yes, yeah. yes. Perfect. Thank you so much. Anything else folks should know this morning? Um, yeah, another option, it, it's you know more costly, but you can hire professional arborists to come out and do um, treatments to your trees for, for the gypsy moth. And um, for those of, of your viewers who are like chemically adverse, they, they don't want to use pesticides, that sort of thing, uh, I'd like to... Uh, swage those fears. It is um, a BT, it's a bacteria that, that they use to treat these moths. It's naturally occurring here, so it's in our soil already. Doesn't affect mammals. Um, if you're not a moth, you will not be effective, <laughs> but it is highly effective for next year's population. Hmm. Um, so yeah, you can hire that out and, and get those treatments as well. Wonderful. Well, Dan, thank you so much for your time. Mm -hmm. it was, we learned a lot today. We did. Already well, in we just learned minutes. of spongy moths. <laughs> right. It, we didn't know we wanted to learn about those. But. <laughs> Things you never knew you wanted <laughs> yeah. to learn, but very, very helpful. Important to know. Thank yeah. you. Absolutely. Thanks so much.